Hey guys, I have been promising you a high-end makeup brush review for a while now. I've tested everything out and I thought I would give you, you know, or tell you my thoughts on a lot of these brushes because the reason being, I don't want to take too much time on this, but the reason I kind of started this up was I was very curious. Really, Penny Lope? Oh my God, girl. Um, the reason I was really curious, started all this is because I was really curious about whether higher end brushes were worth the money. And you know, being someone that likes to try things out and review things, um, I decided that it might be a good idea to try some higher end brushes. I'm really happy with my Real Techniques It Cosmetics. Um, brushes. Those are the ones I use for the mo most part, the economical ones that are super, super good. Uh, but I definitely wanted to test some higher end brushes out and see if they're worth the money. Now, what I will tell you is, is I found out that they are really, really nice brushes. They're great. I'm so glad I have them. I don't like remember what it was like before them because uh, I use them so often in testing them out. Uh, but I will tell you that you really, um, you know, it's one of those kind of luxury purchases and you don't absolutely need them. They aren't must-haves, I would say, but some of them I really did fall in love with. Now, the first one I'll tell you, and I only have one of these. I uh, got it in late December. I thought I'd tell you about it because a couple people asked me, since I always wear the uh, Marc Jacobs Genius Gel, I got the uh, face brush, number one, from Marc Jacobs, and I love it. It is fantastic for foundation application. That's all I've been using it for. It is really, really good at that. And I apologize if this is kind of dirty. Uh, <laughs> I cleaned most of these. The rest of these are clean. But well, this one I use so darn often that it is dirty. Uh, but I'm dirtier on the edges. I did the quick clean that didn't really clean it. Uh, but anyway, this is the, again, the, the face brush number one. Now I looked at the other ones. There are only a couple Marc Jacobs brushes and I think I'm good. The bronze brush, brush is beautiful, the bronzing brush, but it's like 70 something. So I don't even know with the sale if I'd go there. Uh, but I'm really glad I got this one. It was definitely less than 70 and it is fantastic. And I want to use it every day. So that is a great brush that I would highly recommend um, if you do use liquid foundation. Now you could definitely use this um, with powders and things like that. It's a really, really nice fluffy brush, super, super soft, and one of my favorites out of the ones that I tried. Um, I have three brands in front of me. I have a few Chanel brushes, a few Tom Ford brushes, and a few Hourglass brushes that I'm going to talk to you about. And I will say overall, there's one brand that I'm kind of disappointed to, a, a little with their brushes. Um, they aren't really for me. It's definitely personal taste, and you'll see when I go through each brush, uh, you'll, you'll know which brand it is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I will say that there is one brand that surprised me and is super, super expensive. I thought about buying their brushes for a year. I'll go, just go ahead and talk about them. It's the Tom Ford brushes. This was a year-long decision to, to try these out. Uh, these are some of the most expensive brushes that I've come across. I know there are other more expensive brands, definitely no. Uh, there's what, Hakuhodo, and you know, there are other brands that are more expensive. But for me, this was kind of the ceiling for what I would, you know, invest in. And I can't tell you how glad I am that I did because these brushes are amazing. And I'll tell you how amazing, just to tell you, just to kind of put it into perspective. If all of my brushes were gone, all of my makeup brushes were gone, the first thing that I would buy is all new Real Techniques brushes and then these brushes right here. That's what I would do. Uh, so let me go through them for you and show you them and uh, tell you what I thought. This is number five, and this is the <laughs> most expensive one. And this is, I believe, the bronzing brush. And I thought, I've never used anything this big for bronzing, but let me tell you, it is amazing. The other thing that I really like about these brushes, these Tom Ford brushes, is that I believe they're, what are they, goat hair? They wash up like a dream. They are clean as fast as my Real Techniques brushes, which clean up super duper fast. I mean, I thought this whiteness would be like, <laughs> this whiteness, I thought this would be some trouble, but it wasn't. I mean, as soon as you get them in there, they are they are washing clean, dry beautifully, uh, but this brush is just amazing. So there's the close up of it. And it is just soft baby soft on the skin. 
I love this thing. So super, super good. I'm putting them back into the brush bowl there. Uh, this is the number, I hope this is the number six. Um, I use this on my cheeks. It's kind of dense, which is kind of cool. And uh, so there it is right there. Again, I'm not going to, you know, if I don't mention other things that you know I could use these brushes for it, I apologize. I'm just trying to go at a reasonable pace here. But really, really nice. I use this with highlighter as well. It's so darn fluffy. Like, if you see the thickness of it, that's the side. So it's really, really, really cool. And uh, I love this one as well. Very, very nice. Um... This one, and I'll hold it up next to the last one so you can see, this is the number two, and I love using this for highlighter as well. And I'll hold them up together. So this is the number two and the number six that I just talked about. So you can see the size difference. So if you like something a little smaller, it's going to be this number two right here. But something, <laughs> the best background is against me. <laughs> you can see it because it's kind of, it's snowing, it's all white in front of me, all white behind me. So it's very, very light. The lightness of this uh, video, I can tell through the viewfinder, is out of control. But anyway, the smaller one is the number the uh, number two, and then there's the uh, number six. So a lot of people, if you're you know kind of considering these, you might not need both. It just depends on which you prefer um, as far as what you're going to get the most use out of. Because that's what I went. I didn't get all of their brushes, but I got all of the ones I knew that I would use because you don't want to you know spend your time getting a $50 brush and you're not going to use it. Uh, this one is amazing. This is the number, the Tom Ford number 13. And this is the one that reminds me the closest of one of my favorite brushes ever, the MAC 217. But I will tell you, the MAC 217 is better. I put these head to head many days and I was just like, which one is better? And I think the MAC 217 is better than this one. This is a very, very good blending brush, but the 217 is better and a lot cheaper. So I would uh, definitely say that if you really like your 217, uh, then you don't need this. You definitely don't need this. I'm going to keep it because I love it. But uh, it's definitely, you know, if you like 217s and you have a really good, you know, brush that shape and, you know, blending brush, then you might not need the Tom Ford. This is the number 11, and this is kind of the, you know, color placement kind of eyeshadow brush that a lot of brands make um, and I really really liked it. It's soft, it blends beautifully, it's a great great brush. Touch my brushes Penelope and you're gonna hear from me. Cats love brushes. Um, she, I was almost salivating when I put the brushes down. I was like, girl, don't try me. Uh, but this is a really, really good brush. Uh, again, MAC makes, what is it, the 219? I forget the number. But MAC makes one that's really, really nice. This is softer. So that's the only edge. If you're happy with that MAC brush, then you don't need the Tom Ford. But this is noticeably softer to me um, than uh, the MAC brush that kind of corresponds with that. Uh, this next one, I probably is the only one that I probably didn't need. It is the Tom Ford number 14 brush, and it's one of those um, pencil tip kind of brushes um, that's really good for smudging in smaller areas, inner corner, bottom lash area. Yeah, so this is the only one I probably didn't need out of the ones that I got, but definitely keeping it. Uh, it's a really, really nice brush. It washes up better than uh, what I have from MAC, the MAC brush that I have. Uh, this one is the number 12, and I really like this, but I think the bristles could be longer on the brush. It is pretty compact and um, I don't like that about it so I would say this is the one I'm on the fence about uh, like in the same way that I am with the other. Like, I'm going to keep it, but um, I don't think it performs to its highest potential just because the bristles aren't long enough um, for me. So there it is again. Not bad, but not the greatest. So overall, super happy with those brushes. Uh, next, I'm going to get into Chanel. Uh, this brush I've had for a while. And I just wanted to show you really quick. I've had this one for a couple years, ever since their, uh, the, what is it, Lumiere Foundation came out. Is that what it's called? 
Anyway, it's really nice. It is the only foundation I have that is super scented though uh, from Chanel. But anyway, this is the foundation brush. I believe it's number nine. And it's just not my idea of a foundation brush. I don't like these kinds of brushes. I got it with that foundation and I probably, or I know I shouldn't have, but I've had it for a couple years. I use stuff like this. I use brush this brush for moisturizer sometimes or primer, that kind of a thing. So that's kind of how I make use of it. But I just wanted to show you that brush nine it's okay you know if you like those you know and everybody's different about what kind of brush they like to put foundation on I just like something you know more like this you know to put on foundation fingers or my beauty blender you know uh, this brush is the eyeshadow blender number 19 and I found this to be very very nice but it isn't soft it's it's kind of soft but not super soft like what you would expect at this price range for Chanel actually the price range isn't super bad the Tom Ford is you know a lot higher but I found it to be a little tough so I don't think I would recommend this you can get something softer uh, by a much more economical brand so this is the uh, number 19 from Chanel so definitely one uh, that I was disappointed with uh, this next one was good this is the large eyeshadow brush from Chanel it's number 25 and this is a really really nice brush I did I was very glad that I purchased this it's a nice brush uh, washes up really clean and is soft so I uh, think out of all of the uh or not all of the i didn't get a whole bunch of chanel brushes but out of the ones uh that i got this was definitely my favorite chanel brush the large eyeshadow brush uh number what is it number 25 and i returned guys guys calm down i returned the blush brush i really didn't like it it was too small the chanel uh, brush ugh, blush brush is very very small I like something much more fluffy so I return that just so you know uh, the powder brush number one I'm on the fence about this it's a nice brush it's I'm hoping what's gonna happen is after more use it will widen out and I noticed that that can happen and does happen of course uh, with my Real Techniques powder brushes because I have one that I've had since it came out and then I got a backup one because I use it so much the powder brush from them uh, I got a backup one recently and I was cleaning them and I let them dry and then I sat them next to each other in my uh, brush holder and I just saw that the new one is so much more compact than the one that I've had for you know years uh, so you know, definitely, uh, you know, I'll be waiting for this guy to kind of fluff out. But it was a really nice brush. Because it's so compact now, it just doesn't feel great on my skin. Um, it needs to be a lot more loose. So this is the uh, number one powder brush from, from Chanel. And I can already tell the difference in it kind of like fluffing out a little bit from when I got it. Because when I got it, it was just super straight up and down. Uh, but it has gotten a little looser with every washing. So that's good. That's good. I can do this to it. Maybe that'll help. All right. This is the brush brand I ordered first. And I'm a little more disappointed in than the other brands. Uh, this is Hourglass. And these are the Hourglass brushes. Now the first one I've ever purchased, and I've had this one for a while, is the one that came out with the ambient lighting powders. And I forget what number this is, but it has a very, very unique shape. And this is a gorgeous uh, brush for using uh, those powders. And I love it. I think my most used powder is Radiant. It's the one that has like a sub subtle goldish sheen to it. Perfect highlighting powder, my favorite one out of all the ones that they make. And this brush is just great for, you know, putting on powders like this. I use this brush with other brands, of course, my mineralized skin finishes, that kind of thing. Love it. Now, this is the number seven brush, and it's their Kabuki, and I really, really like it. This is a great Kabuki. I've used this with my mineral foundations, uh, bare minerals, mattes. Uh, I use this with, um, when I told you, or it's another video. Uh, I'm taping two today. The other video that I did, I did a haul and I showed you an Urban Decay powder foundation. I used it, this with that. This is a fantastic uh, powder brush or powder foundation brush that I really had enjoyed, you know, and testing them out. Um, the rest of the brushes were just okay to me. 
you know, just okay. Uh, this is the number one, and I believe this is the one that's usually used for powder, uh, for, you know, powder, uh, maybe foundation. Um, but brushes to me, I should explain this in the beginning, have multiple uses. It's just like what you find that you like it for best. That's kind of how I use it. It doesn't necessarily have to be what the company has decided you're going to use it for. That's kind of just the way I look at it. But anyway, this is no, the number one. And I would say that this is a really great brush for, I, I liked using it for powder application because uh, it's really nice and soft and fluffy. Um, but I would say that I thought the bristles were too long. I would have liked them to be a little bit shorter, I think. So that's just what I like using it for best. I don't know if that's what the company has said. I, I kind of like don't even get into that. If you notice, I tell you the number of it and what I used it for. I hope that's not annoying to you, but that's just kind of the way I see it. Uh, number two, uh, and I'll hold them next to each other. The number two is one I totally could have skipped. Um, this is just kind of the smaller version of the number one. And I, you know, just didn't really need this in my collection. So I'll put them next to each other so you can see. So the smaller one is the uh, number two. And the larger one is the number one. And yeah, so I, I could have gotten away with just getting the number one and I would have been fine. Now this one, this is where it gets dicey for me. This is the number four. And I just felt that, again, the bristles are a little too long for me. I kind of lose control. That's why I've said a couple times that I think the bristles um, are too long. I lose control. It kind of gives you that wishy-washy motion, you know, on your eye and that kind of a thing. And I like when you're placing color or blending color, I like a certain amount of softness and firmness, <laughs> you know, whereas these being kind of wishy-washy, things just kind of, you know, I don't like that. Uh, I'm, you know, and then maybe if you're a, you know, at an expert in applying eyeshadow, you know, that what I'm saying totally doesn't make sense to you. So, uh, this is the number four, and this is the one I definitely uh, would return uh, to them. I got these from Nordstrom. The, the uh, Chanel brushes and the Hourglass brushes I got from Nordstrom. I think I might have gotten the number four, though, from Sephora, because I don't know if it was out of stock at Nordstrom or they didn't have it. Uh, this is the number three. Perfectly good brush eyeshadow application um, was fine with this. It has a firmness to it, but as well as well as a softness that I did appreciate. So this, I was very happy with the number three. As well as uh, this, this number five, they're very similar looking, um, but the other one is more fluffy. This is number five. And I kind of liked using this. I used this with concealer a few times and I really, really liked it just because of the flatness of the brush. I used it with concealer as well as eyeshadow, but I really, really liked this one. Uh, I have two left. Let's see. This one I kind of liked a lot. This is the uh, number nine, and this was really good for getting in those uh, areas of my eye, inner corner, bottom lash area, and blending colors out. This was really good for that. That's the number nine. Um, it was very, very stiff to begin with, and it is still pretty stiff, but I think it's going to fluff out a little bit and be... Um, even better as time goes on. Now this one I totally should have skipped. This is the number 10 and <laughs> I just wanted one of these because I have a couple other brands and I just wanted to see if a high-end one was good. So this is the number 10 and I just use this for very specific things like uh, I liked using it with my eyebrows. Um, my Anastasia dip brow I used this with. I love that. That was pretty decent. Um, but yeah, there wasn't a big difference. I do like this brush, definitely keeping it. But I would say that this brush is right on par with some of the, you know, my It Cosmetics brush that is the exact same look um, and much less, you know. Uh, so yeah, this is the number 10. I did like it though. It was great with my brows. In fact, I think I'm gonna like just put it with my brow pomade and in, in, in my little brow container that I have on my vanity because that's the only way I like using it is it was really good for that. But 
Guys, that's everything. I hope that was helpful to you, but definitely the biggest thing I want you to take away from this is you, you do not need high-end brushes. They're definitely a luxury. That's what my opinion is. Um, I love the Tom Ford ones, though. The Hourglass, um, I only probably needed maybe three of those uh, to add to my already you know decent-sized brush collection. It was nice to test out all of them, though, and I will be keeping all of those um, except for, I think, two. I'm going to to take back. So just to be honest, I like to tell you guys exactly what's going on in my head. So I'll put take back two of those. And um, the Chanel brush, I told you I did take back one. I'm okay with the rest of them. Those are fine. And I wouldn't ever, ever part with either that Marc Jacobs brush or the Tom Ford brushes that I got. Would not part with them for anything. They're fantastic. So uh, definitely let me know if you have any questions. You know, I read all your comments and I'm, you know, I try to be really, really good about uh, answering any questions you have. So uh, put your comments and questions below. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. I know this was really long, but uh, this is something I promised to do. And I thought it was really fun to do because I've always wondered, as long as I've used makeup, if high-end brushes were worth the money. And it's kind of nice to find out you don't need them. If you've got the money, it's a nice luxury purchase, but you don't need them. So that's a good to know. I'm glad that I know that. It, it took several hundred dollars to find that out, but hey, it's worth it. It's fun. So talk to you guys later and uh, have a great week. Bye-bye.